They're words no one ever wants to hear. Your cancer has no cure. It's end stage, terminal. He got sicker and sicker each day. And he was literally dying before our eyes. With weeks, months, or years to live, many patients seek out new cancer drugs, hoping they'll help. But some doctors argue many new drugs offer few benefits while sacrificing the quality of life patients have left. And the unfortunate reality is some of our treatments don't even help people live longer. I feel fortunate. I've had a great life, good kids, family, so. We feel quite blessed through this yeah. at the same time. Tom Somerville was diagnosed with colon cancer in 2021, and it spread. He underwent six exhausting months of chemotherapy before asking his doctor for a break. He said, you can take off as much as you want. And so we did that, and we had a really good summer. Including a trip to British Columbia, making new memories along the way. Eventually, with the support of his family, Tom decided to stop treatments. There wasn't a huge chance of things getting much better. And uh, I think if you come to terms with that, it's a lot easier then to, to sort of enjoy the rest of the life you do have. Tom's decision not to treat his end-stage cancer is personal. It's a choice that many people don't often talk about. But doctors at this hospital in Kingston are trying to open up that conversation. They call it common sense oncology. So let's find out what it means. When we arrive, Dr. Christopher Booth is checking in on patients receiving chemotherapy. A woman who's aware her cancer is terminal says family members are asking her questions. Is this chemo going to get rid, rid of everything? Yeah, it's a really good question. Okay, so you might remember we talked about that at the beginning. Yeah. Okay, so the chemotherapy will not make the cancer go away. Okay, we can't get rid of it. The goal here is to try to shrink it down and control it for a period of time to help you feel better. Okay, so the pain and the symptoms are dissipated. Interventions or treatments like chemotherapy can extend survival. A Canadian study looking at potentially inappropriate interventions found around 40% of terminally ill cancer patients were still receiving at least one intervention in their last 30 days of life. Booth stresses if someone has six months or a year to live, how they spend every day matters. And if they're going to spend every day, you know, every Monday in the chemotherapy unit, they're probably going to want to know if that treatment's going to really help them. So I think everyone would agree that a treatment helps people live for extra years or many extra months is probably very helpful. But if a treatment helps someone live for an extra few weeks or an extra couple months with a lot of side effects and a lot of time, different patients will have different perspectives on that. Just to give you an example, a patient with advanced gastric cancer has about six to 12 months survival. There is a new drug. It requires patients to come into the hospital about once a week and they feel sick for about two to four days afterwards. There were also fatal side effects in the trial, but the drug does offer patients two extra months at a cost of about $10,000 a month. To understand better how drug approvals work, we walked over to Queen's University to meet Dr. Elizabeth Eisenhower. And it's a good thing we are having so much interest in finding novel therapeutics for cancer. But my goodness, let's find the answers that matter to patients too. 83% of all clinical In cancer research circles and beyond, Dr. Eisenhower is a big deal. Now retired, she ran over 170 drug trials in Canada, the US and Europe. Eisenhower says in the 1980s, scientists made an estimate. If a cancer drug could shrink a tumor by 20%, it may be of interest. But what started as a general value became an endpoint or goal for drug companies. Problem is, shrinking tumors doesn't necessarily help patients live longer or better lives. I'm hoping the common sense oncology movement will do not just for academics doing trials, but for pharma and for regulators is make them want to recalibrate what it is they're looking for in those new drugs. Treatments are advancing, but there might not be as many recent breakthroughs as you might think. Consider a lung cancer drug that made headlines around the world. 
early results were more promising. Later trials showed, compared to the existing treatment, the new drug at 10.6 months did not improve overall survival. And it cost 10 times more. Not all trials are bad. And we can Dr. Bishal Gaiwali has treated cancer patients in Nepal, Japan, and the U.S. Now in Canada, he too is firmly pushing for change. Sometimes, like Canadian patients, when they read these things in news and know that, okay, there are like three other drugs in U.S., but we don't have access to it in Canada. I wish I was in U.S., but those are drugs that really do not provide much value to the patients. My husband would have done anything. He was not willing to go ever and he would have had any treatment they gave him because that's where his hope was. Rachel Coven's husband Ken was diagnosed in his late 40s. A father and avid runner, he treated cancer like a battle. He underwent painful brain radiation in the weeks before he died. Coven doesn't begrudge any of his decisions but feels families should ask more questions of doctors, like how much time does this treatment offer and what are the real costs and benefits for patients? Not having treatment isn't giving up. Sometimes by having treatment, you're giving up. You're giving up time with your family. You're giving up a quality of life necessarily for something that you're not trading off any extra days. For myself, if I was clinging on to hope all the time, it would make the last couple of years very difficult um, because I would see myself getting sicker. Hope can be a tricky thing. For the Somervilles, it's not gone. It now lives in every moment of every day. But simple things like just walking down to the pond, uh, being out with Catherine, Taking little drives in the car when it's a nice sunny day. It's the companionship. An eye glance that you hold each other in your eyes, you really, and a lot more hugs because you appreciate that moment and you want to take it all in. And those are the simple things that really are not so simple. You realize they're the important things. And Christine Burak joins us now. I imagine this type of decision would be difficult for the family of a patient to accept. These are tough conversations for everyone involved. Tom is remarkable. He knows exactly what he wants to do. But he told us his son questioned his decision to stop treatments, and I think we can all understand that. So Tom put his son in touch with his doctor to talk it out. Again, these are personal decisions. Those doctors are pushing for cancer drugs that help people live longer, better lives. But they'd also like to empower patients to ask questions about their care that are truly meaningful. Thanks, Christine.